Good morning. It's a privilege for Dorothy and I to be here with you this morning. We have enjoyed uh, several in-person services with you, and we've also enjoyed a few on Zoom, uh, relaxing at Amy's house. It's been really good, and we always praise the Lord for good Christian groups we can uh, become part of, and we become part so quickly when we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Guess what the word is for this past week? Yes. Celebrate. <laughs> yes, celebrate. And that's the word I've chosen to, uh, uh, for my sermon this morning. And I've looked up ver various uh, portions of scripture that uh, exhort people to, to celebrate. And the first verse is from uh, Psalm 145, verse 7. It talks about the people of the Lord. They celebrate the abundant goodness and the joyf as joyfully sing of his righteousness. And that is our great God. And so as we celebrate, we celebrate his goodness to us. And, of course, that causes us to sing praise to his holy name for uh, his righteousness and for all the things that he brings to us. Celebration requires several things. It requires a group of people, of course. Then uh, it usually is accompanied with uh, food, with drink, and with music, both musical and uh, both instrumental and uh, singing. And God is praised when we do that together, as we have done this morning. Uh, my brother and his wife, both have birthdays on January the 1st. So we always try to call them around midnight of December 31st to congratulate them and uh, wish them a happy new year and a happy birthday as well. I want to share a few things that we celebrate. We celebrate birthdays, we celebrate anniversaries, we celebrate uh, many things that God has done for us and when we celebrate, we remember and we acknowledge that it is God that has been with us and has gone through these things with us, brought us through many different places. And so as I share a few things about the different celebrations uh, and where we were at that time, you'll see that we have been uh, world travelers, I think we would call them. Um, for Dorothy and I, we spent our 10th anniversary when we were living in East Germany at that in West Germany at that time. Our 20th anniversary we, uh, anniversary we spent in Rosemary, Alberta, where I was pastoring a church. Our 30th anniversary, we lived in Zaporozhye in the Ukraine, where Dorothy and I together pastored a, a German-speaking in, in German congregation in Ukraine. For our 40th anniversary, we lived in uh, Airdrie already, and wh where, we li where we live now. And our 50th anniversary was also in Airdrie, but because of COVID, we couldn't celebrate it at home, oh, like we could have, but we wanted to go away. But the only place we could go to was uh, Saskatchewan. So we went to a, a mineral spa where we could uh, enjoy God's goodness in that way, and where we could al also go out to a restaurant for our uh, anniversary meal. And so God has been very good to us and blessed us in, in many, many ways, and we thank him and we praise him for that. I'm not sure that God celebrates or how he celebrates, uh, but I'm sure he does. But he's always in the present, and so he's always celebrating the things that he is doing and the things that he is blessing people with. In, I think the first celebration that God ordained was the Sabbath day for the Jewish people. No, not for the Jewish people, for everyone. That was part of his creation plan, a day a week to celebrate and to set apart. And when we celebrate, we acknowledge and we remember. And so also we celebrate on Sundays when we gather to worship, even as we are gathered here this morning. We remember God's goodness and his righteousness uh, in dealing with us. And, uh, and blessing his people. We celebrate uh, things that God has told us to, 
but we have added many of our own cultural things that we celebrate. And I think those are good. They're not bad. When we celebrate and remember God, it's, uh, it's blessing his name and also honoring him. But in Exodus chapter 23, verses uh, 14 to 17, God calls the children of Israel to celebrate three f festivals. And they're not just a one-day festival. They're a seven-day festival, uh, much like you people here in Hong Kong do. Uh, but he calls them to celebrate three very important uh, weeks that are, uh, that are to remind them of God's goodness. The first celebration is that of unleavened bread or of the Passover. And for the Jewish people, the Passover was a very uh, big thing to remember because God had done many great things for the people of Israel at that time. When they were in Egypt in slavery, God brought them out. He brought them out with miracles and uh, uh, protection and provision and uh, just guiding them all the way so that they could be released from that bondage that they had suffered during the time that they were maybe away from the Lord a little bit, but away from the country where God wanted them to be. So as we celebrate uh, the different things that God has called us to do, we honor him, we remember his goodness, and thank him for all that he does. So now I want to also mention some celebrations that we enjoy as the Christian church. And uh, these are not really things that God has commanded us specifically to, uh, to celebrate, even as he did to the children of Israel. But I think we can safely say that these are our godly celebration days. Um, and I've just written down several of them and I uh, want to make mention of them. Of course, Lunar New Year is one of those that we have just celebrated. Um, and we've spelled it celebrated New Year on January the 1st. Then there are some others that are more of a religious nature. Uh, the New Year's celebrations have kind of uh, lost their spiritual emphasis, I might, I might say. When we were in Rosemary, uh, beginning our ministry there, the church there still had um, New Year's Eve services, was mostly part of uh, testimony and sharing God's goodness. But then there was also uh, a New Year's Day service, and uh, slowly, slowly that went away, uh, and I don't think that's being done anymore. Of course, those celebrations continue in the homes of the family of the church and uh, are acceptable to God. Then there's the period of Lent, or first of all, there's January the 6th, which we celebrate as uh, Epiphany or the celebration of the arrival of the, of the kings, uh, or the magi, and they came to the house where Jesus was. So they didn't, Jesus, uh, the wise men did not come to the stable in Bethlehem, but they came to the home where Jesus was. And so this was some time later, and he may have been a year, year and a half old by that time. Then there's a celebration of Lent, which is a period of uh, six weeks or so, uh, in preparation for the celebration of uh, Good Friday. And it's strange that we call it Good Friday, but it is very, very meaningful because for us it is a good day and uh, a good expression of God's love to us. Then, of course, there's Easter Sunday, which is the, the living celebration of our living Lord coming back to life and... Uh, preparing to uh, go back to his throne in heaven. And uh, so we celebrate uh, that day in a very special way. Then there's the ascension. Forty days later, Jesus ascended to his place in heaven. And then, ten days later, he sent his Holy Spirit, which we call the Day of Pentecost. And that's a very important celebration. And uh, a lot of times... In my tradition, we have a baptism on Pentecost Sunday, but uh, that not always. But Pentecost is a time where the Holy Spirit came down, and each of us who have received Jesus as our Savior 
have the Holy Spirit living within us, and that makes it possible for us to live the Christian life. After Pentecost, then there's a break for till, till Thanksgiving, and uh, in Canada we celebrate the Thanksgiving on a Monday, the second Monday in October. In the States, it's usually the last uh, Thursday of November, and uh, I'm not quite sure what you do here, but you celebrate that more often too. Then another celebration that I think has been very important, but has been gone has has been overtaken by the worldly celebration that I don't even like to name, Reformation Sunday on the 31st of October, uh, began a great revival and a turning to God, especially in Germany under the leadership of Martin Luther, but also the work of the Holy Spirit. And so we celebrate those days and those times when God has visited people who were living in darkness and has brought light and life to them. Then there's Advent, the four weeks before Christmas, and then there's Christmas Day, the celebration of the birth of Jesus, which we celebrate every year. We give gifts to one another, uh, traditionally, and that is to also uh, an expression of giving a gift to our Lord Jesus. And so many of these so-called human-made Celebrations are a reflection of what God is doing and has done in our lives. Then I want to mention several celebrations that we should really celebrate more. Um, and the first one is our own salvation, our own conversion, our own day when we gave our hearts and lives to Jesus. Nicodemus came to Jesus and asked uh, Lord, do we know that you are a teacher come from God? Uh, for no man can do the miracles that you are doing except God be with him. And Jesus turned that around and said to him, Nicodemus, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And so we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus couldn't understand that at all because he was thinking only of the physical birth, but Jesus was speaking of the spiritual birth. And of course, for us who have experienced that, uh, that rebirth, know what that is all about. For me, it happened in the middle of the night, one night in late August or early September, I'm not quite sure. And maybe I have lost the date because I don't celebrate it enough. And uh, that's, that happens to a lot of us. When we stop celebrating these special days, we forget when they really occurred. Then as a church, we are called to celebrate the baptisms. Baptism that we experienced, water baptism and spirit baptism, and also um, celebrate the baptism of others. And uh, we've had in our ministry many special days of, of baptisms. Uh, the one that stands out the most to me right, right now as I was preparing was uh, baptism in Ukraine where we baptized 10 people on one Sunday morning and it was a really, really special occasion and a, a joy and I look back to that and thank God for all the things he has done for those 10 people who were baptized that day. And thank God because his spirit has, has done the work and is continuing to do that work. Then after that we also have the communion which Normally, we would be celebrating this Sunday, uh, and a lot of churches do that the first Sunday of the month. Uh, our son-in-law's church does it every Sunday, and uh, we've come to enjoy and appreciate that as well. But God doesn't tell us that we have to do it every Sunday, but only as often as we do it, we have to do it in remembrance of Jesus, and we have instructions that the, the Apostle Paul gave to the Corinthian church. And so these, these celebrations are very important to keep on honoring God, acknowledging that he is at work in the congregation and in his church. We, we honor some other things as well in, in the Christian church. We celebrate marriages, weddings, and they are important. And of course, the married couple are supposed to remember their marriage date, and I do. I think it was uh, 
May the 8th. So many years ago, I'm not sure which date it was, but um, by remembering these on an annual basis, we, re we thank God, we honor God, and uh, we rem remind each other of what, uh, what brought us to that place of going down that aisle to the altar and being married. Then on the other hand, we have the funerals. And in Canada, the funerals are mostly called celebration of life, which is a, a, is a good description of a funeral service. Some are sad, and some are uh, almost a relief. Uh, in our family, this past year, we've had three funerals. Uh, my oldest brother passed away in July, but he was born again, so it was a happy occasion. And even though we couldn't gather in large groups, for that occasion, we were able to gather in a fairly large group, and it was a, it was a real blessing and a joy to do that. Then uh, my oldest nephew passed away in October, and we were not able to attend that funeral, but that's also a joyous occasion because he also knew Jesus as his Savior and Lord. And then just before uh, Christmas, uh, my old... My, only remaining sister passed away, so my sisters are all gone. But she also knew the Lord and had served him for many years. And so even though we couldn't be there, we uh, remembered her and the things that God had done in her and through her and uh, changing her from what she was to what he wanted her to be. Then we go back to... Uh, the fourth point that I have is uh, celebrate times of renewal and of repentance. Return of the prodigal son is a story of, uh, of return and of forgiveness and of being brought back into that family. The story of the prodigal son is in Luke chapter 15, and we won't take time to read it. I'm quite sure that you know the story, and if not, I'll tell it to you. There was a father with two sons. I'm sure there was a mother as well, but uh, for the purpose of this story was the father and the two sons. It, ended, it started off with a very, very sad occasion. The youngest son figured, I'm so tired of living on this farm, I want to go and explore the world. And so he said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the inheritance that belongs to me. I am going away. I'm tired of being here, and I want to, I want to live the life that uh, I want to enjoy. I'm sure it was very painful as for his father to do that, but he respected his son's wishes and gave him his portion. The foolish son went away and spent everything, he hadn't done addition very well, and uh, so he spent his money much quicker than he thought. And then when his money was gone, then he was in deep trouble. And he tried to make it on his own, but he just dug his way deeper and deeper into the pig pen. And finally he realized, look at my father has, has the farm, he has servants. Maybe if I went back and told him I was sorry and repented and asked him to take me on as one of his servants, he would do that. And then I would have enough to eat. And so he made his way back to his father. And then we have the change of scenery from a, the sad picture of the son leaving to the joyous celebration of the father waiting for his son to come home. And as the son comes home, he runs out to meet him and greet him and welcome him back into the family. And he says to his servants, kill the fatted calf and bring the best robe and put sandals on his feet. For this my son was dead and is alive again. And that's how it is when the sinner returns home. And the sinner returns to Jesus, born again, made clean with a new robe, and a ring on his finger, 
and there there's celebration. And we would like to think that this celebration continued, and maybe it did. But then there was also a sad part, again, because there was an older son who had stayed with his father and had worked faithfully and done very well. And when he came home from the field, he heard there was a party going on, and he didn't know what this was all about. Asked one of the servants, and the servant said, your brother has come home, and we should celebrate and rejoice. Your dad is so happy. Come on, let's go. And the older son said, no, no, I'm not doing that. He took off, and he shouldn't have come back. That's a sad picture of how many people feel about people who turn to the Lord. They did so many bad things that it's not right that God should receive them back. But God is merciful, and it receives us back and makes us part of the family again. And so also, uh, in this picture, the father received the son back. And I would like to, I would like to think that the older son changed his mind. The story doesn't tell us that, but I think that in, in my mind I like the story to end that way. You can have the story end the way you want. But that's, we need to celebrate when people come back to the Lord. And uh, sad to say we've had many friends who have uh, turned away from the Lord and then come back. And it, that's a reason for great celebration because God's goodness is so abundant, and his mercy is so great, and he is righteous. So moving on to the next point, celebration acknowledges achievements and uh, things that God has done and things that God has allowed man to do. And that brings me to uh, two portions of scripture that you are quite familiar with uh, from your pastor's preaching from Nehemiah and Ezra. In Ezra chapter 6, uh, verse 16, we have uh, the dedication of the temple. Ezra and the whole group of people from uh, those who were taken into captivity were allowed to go back home. And that's another very, very interesting story, how God moved the heart of a of a foreign uh, king who didn't know God, but God moved in his heart to send the people of Israel back to Jerusalem, and not only that, to order them to build the temple of God. And so Ezra was a part of that, and Ezra was a, was a scribe, uh, maybe a priest, and he led the people back uh, in, in the building of the temple of God and so in, in verse 16 of chapter 6, we have this. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. And so celebrations are periods of joy and continue to be, do that today as well. In Nehemiah uh, chapter 8, chapter 27, uh, chapter 12, verse 27, we have the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. And again, under many, many miracles that God performed in the hearts and lives of, of foreign people, God ordered not only the rebuilding of the wall, but the provision for the rebuilding. And so Nehemiah was able to uh, come out of captivity and come back to this land uh, of his forefathers and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem with great joy. Then in chapter, um, chapter 8, verse 10 of Nehemiah, you know this verse quite well, but at the, but at the, uh, the dedication of, of the wall, um, there again was much joy and, and, the, and there was the reading of the, of the scriptures that had been found. And as the word of God was being taught again, people were repenting and were returning to their faith in the God whom they trusted and loved. And there was a lot of uh, weeping and uh, repentance going on. 
And Nehemiah finally had to tell the people, stop being sad. Today is a great and a joyous day. Uh, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. We've talked about that in the last few Sundays. And the joy of the Lord is our strength to keep on going. And the joy of the Lord comes as we celebrate his goodness and honor him in uh, worship and in praise and walking with him. Remembering and acknowledging the things that he has done. The psalmist David wrote many psalms of praise and of worship and of celebration. One verse, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but he says, let us go to the house of the Lord and uh, with, with joy and thanksgiving. And that brings me then to the celebration of honor, to honor the achievements of others, or to honor someone who has, whom God has blessed richly. In, in 2 Samuel um, verses six, chapter 6, verse 21, David, again, was celebrating the goodness of God. David had longed to build a temple in Jerusalem, but God had told him, no, you can't build the temple, but your son will. And so uh, David worked hard at trying to bring provisions together for the building of the temple. But one of the things that was still missing was the Ark of the Lord that had been taken captive by the Philistines under the foolish decisions of King Saul. And uh, David wanted so much to bring this ark back to Jerusalem and dedicate it to the Lord there. Uh, along the way, there had been some difficulties. They had tried to bring it home. And uh, one of the, the guys that was walking beside the cart did what he was not supposed to do, and it cost him his life. And so David was afraid. If God is going to deal with us that way, we have to be very careful. And so he was. He was very careful in uh, bringing the ark of God back in the, in the fashion, in the way that God had told them to, not on a, on a cart, but carried by, by priests. And during that time when the, the ark was being brought up, David celebrated uh, he celebrated wildly, we might say, but not. Um, but he celebrated in honor, to honor God and to celebrate the return of the ark. Maybe not the return, but the bringing of the ark of God to the city of Jerusalem, which was God's chosen city. And so, he danced before the Lord, and he celebrated uh, on his way back to his home to bring the ark back to that place where uh, he thought it should be and where it belonged. And so we are also called to celebrate and to honor others. But this week and over the next week or so, we'll be uh, watching the Olympics from Beijing. And we see the fantastic things that God has given people the ability to do. Yesterday we watched a little bit of uh, uh, skiing, ski jumping. And it's amazing how they can fly through the air and land on their feet and not get hurt. And some of them uh, fell down but uh, didn't get hurt. But the things that God has given man to uh, be able to learn to do, it's, it's so amazing. But it's so wonderful. And we, we honor them. But in honoring them, we also acknowledge that it's the God who has given them the ability to do these things. We honor others in the ways of uh, usually uh, celebrations of eating and, and drinking when we honor people who have achieved great things, such as graduation. Uh, we have three children. They have all been honored in graduating and achieving things and high school and beyond high school. Uh, two of them are teachers, and the other one's a preacher. So within our family, we have two preachers and three teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're outweighed a little bit by the women and uh, the teaching profession. But 
We praise the Lord for the things that he has given uh, to our children to be able to accomplish. And, uh, and so we praise God for, uh, the, for Amy's ability to spend these years here in Hong Kong and, and doing, doing well. We celebrate God for leading our son and his family to pastoring a church in California. And we want to go visit them later this year when we get back home. And our youngest daughter lives close to us and has two children, and so they become very precious to us, and, uh, and we honor them. When we come home now, we're going to be celebrating our youngest granddaughter's 12th birthday, so we look forward to that. But for us and for you as a congregation here at Lighthouse, I wish you God's richest blessing. And don't forget to celebrate uh, the good things that God is doing in your congregation. Uh, we celebrated a great meal there uh, a little while ago uh, in December. And, and remember these things. Do these things because in doing them, you honor God. In doing them, you bring joy to, to you and to those around you. And uh, God will be pleased and God will bless you. So let's continue to celebrate the goodness of God, his abundant goodness, and his sing to his joyful uh, righteousness. I would like to close with a prayer. Dear Lord God, I give you praise and thanks for this opportunity to celebrate on a Sunday morning with other believers to share your word. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, for salvation you have brought and paid for so that all of us can know you, and, and, and many more will yet come to know you through the ministry of, of this church. I thank you for Pastor Jennifer, and I pray your blessing upon her, that you would give her joy to be here uh, and just fill her with your spirit to continue the ministry that you have given to her to do with the difficult circumstances of, of COVID. Uh, that, that will not take over things that could otherwise bring honor and praise to you. We thank you, Lord. We pray for the leadership of this church and for all those who come here. We pray that they would soon be able to gather all of them together using all the uh, facilities that are here for them to use to learn to know you better, to know your word, and to grow in, our, in faith and in their walk with you. Lord, you have been good, and you will be good. And we look forward to the good things that you are doing. We praise you, we thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we thank you, amen.